Hello and welcome to Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So the game isn't out yet, don't panic. Don't panic. But I was very kindly invited by Ubisoft to a game capture session along with a load of other YouTubers where we got to capture sequence three of the game. Now, I'm very conscious that a lot of you won't want spoilers, so I'm gonna try and keep them to a minimum. Now, I'm gonna give you some context of what's going on. Um, Evie and Jacob have just arrived in London and they have been tasked to take back London from a very specific group of baddies, obviously Templars, who have been controlling London for quite some time. In fact, they have been controlling London ever since Haytham showed up and killed all of the assassins. That's how long, we're talking 200, 300 years. They have had control over London for that long. They have integrated themselves into everything. They are controlling the factories. They are controlling the banks, you know, everything they are in charge of. So um, these two are gonna meet up with Henry Green, who is the Indian guy that you would have seen in previous gameplay capture of the demo I did. And we're gonna try and start taking back London. I've never seen so many people all at once. <laughs> Churning seas of London. It's just the way Father described. Now, to find Henry Green and formulate a plan of attack against the Templars. Who's Mr. Green again? Assassin watching over London. Did you not listen the first three times? If you haven't gathered, Jacob's a bit of a dick. In a good way. Watch it. Ben Pong, sir. That kid's stolen your wallet, mate. Oi! Come back here, you filthy Jacob, dipper! Stop. So, yeah, Jacob, if you hadn't guessed, is the uh, unruly twin out of the two. Evie's the one that follows the code, you know, she has respect for everything, she gets the job done. Jacob is a lot more like, oh, I'm gonna do this shit, whatever, mate, um, and very carefree. And I think that's partly because the developers wanted to take us back to the popularity of Ezio and Edward. You know, we love those, like, roguelike characters. Now, of course, London wouldn't be London, especially Whitechapel, which I think is where we are. Uh, it wouldn't be London without not only the thieves, but also the gangsters. Keep it. Well, well. What do we have here? You're on our property. Now, I have got things like Quick Shot, which uh, would allow me to use either a gun or a knife, similar to the old usual ones. The combat system is also very Unity based. Obviously, it's the Unity engine uh, with a few improvements and tweaks, so it's not surprising. If you see, you've got a finishing move, but um, if you see a yellow flash, you can also counter. Now, at this point in the game, it's too early for me to have learned that because I'm a massive noob, but. It's very satisfying when you can pull it off. And actually, ah, Evie's combat, despite the fact she's a before? stealth girl, dudes, she's amazing. Now is not the time for tourism, Jacob. Now's the time to find Henry Green. I've always been the quicker climber, haven't I? Not since we were two. Race it to the highest vantage point. OK, so there's always this rivalry between them because they're twins. And I do quite like that. Evie puts up with a lot from Jacob. He is a bit of a dick a lot of the time. Um, and I'm not quite decided yet with him, with his character, whether I like the level or whether it's slightly too far. And I think we'll have to watch, as the game plays itself out, how he adapts and changes. They were very conscious um, not to have an Arno situation, I think, with this one, of, you know, Arno turned out originally very ezio -y, very roguish, very like, hey, lads, and then became an assassin and got really serious, and that's not what, hopefully, Jacob does. That would be Henry there. Two assassins. Equal in height. One female, one male. Two decades old. And those devilish smiles. You must be the Fry Twins. And you are? Henry Green, at your service. I was sorry to learn about your father's passing. Thank you. What can you tell us about Crawford Starrick? I suppose the Council desires news. London must be freed to provide a better future for all of its citizens. Well, thank goodness the Council saw reason and sent you to aid us. Yes. Thank goodness. Unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news. Today, Starik sits at the helm of the most sophisticated Templar infrastructure known in the Western world. Every class, every borough, the gangs, the industries. His reach extends all across London. I've always thought of myself as a gang leader. Firm, but fair. Huh. Well, I have uniforms. And I'll unite a mix of disenfranchised outsiders under one name. That's it, Evie. 
we can rally them to our side. Oh, like the way that you rallied those card players at the Oakwood Tavern into the river. Oh, that was different. They beat me at whist. I can see it now. We'll call ourselves the Rooks. You're never good at chess either. Have you got a better plan? Find the piece of Eden. Oh, well, let me show you the lay of the land. Shall we? See, this is where it shines so far, or at least for me, I enjoyed the banter of the twins because Evie is very much a dude, shut the fuck up sort of thing and Jacob is very cheesy. Uh, he bangs on about the rooks forever and then obviously the gangs do get called the rooks, um, which isn't a spoiler because there's an edition called the rooks and I've shown like before that it's called the rooks and uh, yeah, I just love that he got his way despite the fact she was like, we're not calling it the rooks. Look at what Starak has done to the city. Whitechapel is riddled with crime. Child labor, despite regulations. A gang known as the Blighters overruns the streets and Templars manipulating behind the scenes. As in all the other boroughs, we need to return this city to the people who built it in the first place. Yes, we will free London from Starak. You have my word. So Starrick is the big bad Templar dude in this. Um, and I recall Ubisoft saying at the event they were very, very keen to ensure that Starrick, if you don't have any confusion over who the bad guy is during this one, we are told right from the beginning who this fucker is. And he is a mean, he is a mean, mean man. Um, there should be a trailer that's premiering, I think, now already, which shows him. He is messed up and he's got all his little followers that you'll end up taking out. And there's quite a lot of them. It felt like an Ocean's Eleven style trailer. There was like this guy and then the banker and then this. And it was like, we've got a lot of people to assassinate. We've got a lot of targets. This could be great. Looking for me. Who's One of Starrick's gang leaders. Why does he want you? He's after some of my more arcane research into one of the precursor artifacts. So yeah, obviously we've got a piece of Eden. There's always a piece of Eden. So tell me about these blighters. In search of an army, Starrick gathered up the nastiest of the underworld. Some of the city's gangs tried to prevent it and were slaughtered for their efforts. Now, only Whitechapel's clinkers remain opposed, but they're no match for the blighters. Well, let's shine these clinkers up then, shall we? Postbox. They're just the sort we're looking for. You can't be serious. Evie, they're ready to fight and oppose the blighters. This is my chance to step in. Look out, London. Here come the rooks. So yeah, this is Whitechapel. There's carriages everywhere, there's some cool water shit on the ground, because obviously it's Britain and it rains all the time. And we're about to meet a very iconic British historical figure. Confound this city! No one looks where they're going! Yes, I've noticed that. Bloody drood! I'll never finish it at this rate. Only Providence knows where those words are headed now. Well, I must get to work replacing them. Should you ever be in the mood for a tale or two, you can always find me where the ale is warm and tempers are hot. Ta-ta! What an odd man. That Mr. Fry was Charles Dickens. Knows everyone and everything in the city. If I were you, I would keep that connection... I'm not sure about Charles Dickens and uh, Darwin. Charles Dickens and Charles Darwin, how they fit in. I don't really know the story with them. And again, it's it's one of these things a bit like Jack the Ripper where I wonder whether it, it might be a bit iffy. We'll have to see when the game comes out how the Darwin and the Dickens stuff actually work. But they could be a bit disjointed. I know we have familiar famous figures in the past, but sometimes they don't sit quite right. So again, we'll have to see with those two. Walk on, girl. We need to lead them away from Green. So what just happened in the cutscene, and I purposely talked over it, was that um, Green is trying to escape the local gang who've noticed he's around and they want to track him back to his shop. So we've kindly volunteered to distract them, lead them away and fuck up their carriages. Now, carriage combat isn't bad. It's one that I think you have to get used to as you play the game more because it's quite hard to steer them. I mean, obviously they're not a car, you're driving a horse. They've gone. Now to return to Mr. Green. Aye, aye, Captain. You're relentless. That relentlessness will see me become master when we finish this. George would do nothing of the sort. Whatever's left of the creed would 
perish under your control. Harsh words, dear sister. Harsh but fair, mate. Harsh but fair. I do hope Mr. Green made it back safely. Don't tell me you fancy the bloke already. <laughs> and what do you suggest we do if our number one source of information turns up dead? Starrick can't be that hard to find. I say we turn the carriage round and go find him. This is why you aren't in charge. Yeah, Jacob. You aren't in charge. Whoa. Right. Uh, oh. Do I have to... Oh. Steer the thing. Steer the horse. There we go. Slightly closer. Hey! Evie's done a runner. Uh, oh. Ah, oh, there we go. Did you give them the slip? We gave them more than that. <laughs> Who are all these people? Over the years, I have established a number of connections across the city. Splendid. We'll need focused aid. Focused aid? <sighs> we take over Starek's gangs. We cripple his control. You're not aiming high enough. Starek has influence in every branch of society. We need to match him. I see what you're saying, Evie. We need the rooks. Dude. You are not starting a gang called the Rooks. I believe I may have an idea of my own. So Henry's now going to tell us a few different sources of where we can go to pick up more information, get allies and things like that. I'm going to show you a few quests over the next few videos which uh, detail some of the starting quests and types that you will get in the game. It doesn't show all of them. There are quite a lot. And when I say quite a lot, I mean there's a bucket load. Like, Jesus Christ. I opened, uh, I opened the map at one point and just went, I don't even know where to start. There was so much variety. Now, I will also add as well, Henry's mouth in this scene isn't perfect. This is because this build is probably two months old and it's a stable one and they're happy with it, which is why they're letting people capture it. So in the final build, things like that should be fixed, especially because Jacob and Evie's mouths are fixed. Usually they do it character by character. So it is highly possible that Henry hasn't yet had the final pass in terms of his lip syncing. So for now, I'm going to sort of let the lip syncing stuff slide and we'll see in the final version whether that is still a feature that hasn't been tweaked. We didn't arrive before Evie, but pff, she has to win something. Also, to be fair, I'm switching to her in a minute. It's really simple to do it. As you can see for the tutorial that's just flashed up, you literally open the main menu and you switch between them. You can't do it for every quest. There are specifics where Jacob or Evie has to do them. But on the whole, you can play pretty much most of what I've seen so far as either one of them. In fact, I played Evie for about two hours and I'd never had to switch back to Jacob. So anyone who was worried about Evie not having that much screen time, that is not the appearance that I got from the game. There's certainly going to be story elements and quest elements where you have to play one or the other of the twins. But on the whole, it seems so far like there is a very reasonable amount of choice. Now, Evie and Jacob work on an XP skill point system. I can't show you those menus at the time, but you're going to have to trust me when I say holy ball sacks, guys. I sat there for about 10 minutes looking through her skill menu, her item menu, because yes, items are there, and yes, you can upgrade them. The appearance, you can change her outfit, you can change the colours. All that shit is there that we have from Unity, and it seemed a lot more polished. I am really looking forward to when the game comes out and I can finally show you guys that because Jesus Christ, it seems so much fun. Now what I'm briefly going to show you before the end of this video is the concept of kidnapping, which we do see premiere in the Eevee demo that was at Gamescom. Now kidnapping allows you to walk up undetected behind an enemy and just kidnap them. It allows you to take Templar enemies and bring them back to your assassin friends for assumedly interrogation, but I'm not going to question what they want to do with them. If you're interested in seeing what the kidnapping missions are like, then I will see you next time on the next video, which should be out later today, where I show you the first of the kidnapping missions. Thanks for watching. See you soon.